Hi everyone, I'm David Aragona and this is the 2021 Time Form US Road to the Kentucky Derby Series. This week the focus is at the fairgrounds where they're running the second prep in their series leading up to the Louisiana Derby. That is the Grade 2 Risen Star going a mile and an eighth. It's race 13, the final race on that Saturday card at the fairgrounds. Let's throw up the field and it's a large competitive cast of characters. 13 were entered for this race. One is sure to come out. I think we're likely to have two defections, as I just saw my colleague Marcus Hirsch tweet that Defeater, the number nine, is likely to scratch as well as the number 12. Keep me in mind. Now, the morning line I did see for this race, preliminary morning line, um, the number 12, Keep Me in Mind, was listed as the three to one morning line favorite. I imagine now the favorites will, will be inherited by the number 11, Mandaloon, who was nine to two second choice on the morning line. But other horses that are likely to take money include the number five, Senior Buscador, that impressive springboard mile winner, as well as the number six midnight bourbon who won the local prep for this race the lecompte pretty competitive field many who faced each other some coming from other directions um, plenty of horses moving up in class that have made an allowance victories a lot to sift through before we get to the contenders let's take a look at the time form us pace projector for this race now those two likely scratches are not going to affect this projection very much because both of those horses were shown towards the back of the pack the number nine and the number 12. Towards the front, you see the number 13 right and just on the lead, contesting the pace with the number six, Midnight Bourbon. That makes some sense. Midnight Bourbon was the gate-to-wire winner of the Lecompte, and right and just is also coming off a wire-to-wire -wire win in an optional claiming race last month at the fairgrounds. Other horses likely to show speed are the number 11, Mandaloon, and the number 10, Santa Cruiser, who did show speed in his maiden victory before having a poor start in the Lecompte. So we'll see if this fast pace projection comes true. I think just those two up front are the two that would be looking to get to the early lead in here and others are to more tracking types so we'll see who chooses to really press this pace on the front end moving into those contenders let's start with the number five senior buscador who i think will get bet down quite a bit off that six to one morning line especially after the scratch of keep me in mind this horse has really done nothing wrong in his career two for two two very exciting wins closing from the back of the pack and you see that 116 time form us speed figure that he earned for the springboard mile that number absolutely jumps off the page in this field. It's significantly higher than anybody else has run in this race. We'll get to a discussion of that speed figure a little bit, but let's first take a look at a replay of his last race, that impressive victory in the springboard mile. This horse has no early speed at all. He drops well out in the early going, lags behind the field. But when he gets into the stretch of this race, he kicks for home very impressively and just rockets past this field, looking like a younger version of Zenyatta at the end of this race as he's running away from this group. Not really sure what was behind him. Uh, we've had plenty of horses come back out of this race, and most of them have not run back to the speed figures that they received here, including the runner-up Cowan, who came back and was a distant second-place finisher behind uh, Cattle River and the Smarty Jones next time. Also, a third-place finisher, Red and Wild. He came back and competed in a prep for this race, the Lecompte, and was a no-show in that race. Significantly drop off, a significant drop off from him, the, the um, time formula speed figure that he got in the springboard mile. So I think it remains to be seen whether or not that 116 is a true number and one that Senior Buscador will run back to here. But this horse has looked great in both starts to date. He's likely to get a fast pace to close into here, and the mile and eighth distance. He's bred to handle it. He's a half-brother to Runaway Ghost, who won the Sunland Derby when he was a younger horse, going the same distance. So uh, plenty to like about Senior Buscador, uh, but I just wonder if he'll get bet down off that 6-1 to one morning line and will go off as one of the favorites here. Moving on to the winner of the Lecompte, Midnight Bourbon, going out for the Steve Asmussen Barn. One of the more experienced runners in this race, having five starts under his belt already. As I said, he's coming off that victory last time, and he really had everything his own way in the Lecompte. There was some speed that scratched out of that race, and it allowed him to inherit a pretty moderate early pace as he was setting... Uh, setting the pace on the lead the entire way. Didn't get too much early pressure from his rivals, was able to kick away an upper stretch and hold off uh, the game runner-up proxy in there. He still earned a very respectable 110 time from your speed figure. If he improves it all off that number and Senior Buscador regresses, uh, he becomes the very likely winner of this race. We'll just see how much added pace pressure he gets from that outside runner, the number 13, right and just, and whether he can continue to improve as the distances stretch out to a mile and an eighth. I think he's, he's a contender in this race. I just think he's pretty exposed at this point his form is at, very, at, at least off that last performance. And I think others might offer a bit more value in this race. Talking about some other horses that finished behind Midnight Bourbon in that Lecompte, those include Mandaloon, the number 11 in this race, the well, horse who will inherit morning line favoritism at nine to two, although he'll get bet down off that. He was the heavy four to five favorite in the Lecompte. And 
He was a little bit disappointing in there. He did get a wide trip around both turns, but he really had his shot to come and get Midnight Bourbon an upper stretch and just couldn't quite do it. This is a horse who did take a big step forward off his first two starts, where I know he had been visually impressive in those races, but he hadn't really run a particularly fast speed figure in those wins. So he did improve his speed figure considerably in the Le Comte last time, but he's going to have to improve again, and he's likely to take money again. So I don't see him as a horse that's going to offer value in here, even though he could continue progressing. So I'll definitely use him underneath, but he's not a horse that I wanted to key on or, or use towards the top of my wagers in, in win or exotic plays. Moving on to other horses that are coming out of that LeCompte. Proxy actually split Midnight Bourbon and Mandaloon at the end of that race. He was the second place finisher there. I thought he put in a game effort. Maybe he had a slightly better trip than Mandaloon because he was one path inside of that rival for much of the race. But this seems like a really game gritty horse who's always going to be involved in the finish. He's a grinding type, not one that has any kind of turn of foot, but he just keeps coming at you. And it looked like he was going to fade to third for a second in mid stretch of the LeCompte, but he kept grinding away and was able to get past Mandaloon when they got to the wire. I still have a feeling that this horse is ultimately going to be better on the turf. He's a half-brother to Michelin, and he's by Tappet. There is some turf pedigree on the damn side, and uh, I'd be looking for this horse to eventually switch surfaces, but I can't blame his connections for pressing on at the Kentucky Derby Trail for now, given how well he ran in the LeCompte last time. I think this horse has ability, and I'll use him underneath for sure, because as I said, he's a horse that figures to always be around at the finish. I'm just not sure that he's quite ready to take that step forward to be the winner of this race. One more horse coming out of the LeCompte that I think you do want to consider is the horse that will be the biggest price out of those, and that's the number 10 Santa Cruiser. He finished fourth, almost 10 lengths behind the winner, Midnight Bourbon. But if you watch the start of that race, he had a big excuse. He was sandwiched between rivals, broke a little bit slowly, and just got completely taken out of his game because he is a horse that in his pre previous start, his maiden victory, he had set the pace and gone on to win that race, and he was forced to completely adapt his running style with LeCompte after that poor start, lacking well behind the field. And James Graham, once the start went so disastrously, he just basically dropped his hands and allowed this horse to lag at the back of the pack. He's still about 15 lengths to make up as they're rounding the far turn, but once he asked this horse for run, he was making up ground at the end, obviously never getting close to the leaders, never threatening for a top placing in that race, but he was finishing much faster than anybody else in a race that mostly held together on the front end. So I'm not sure how good this horse really is. He's going to have to improve off his best time form the rest of the figures in the high 90s, but I'm sure he's better than his last race, and maybe the added distance will help a horse who's a son of dialed in, I have a tap at mare, shouldn't mind a mile and an eighth. So I think he's a price horse that you do want to use at least underneath in this race. Other horses that are up-and-comers making their stakes debuts in this race, uh, one of those is the number four, Carrillo, who's making his second career start, also his first start for the Tom Amos Barn. This horse was previously owned by Paul Pompa, who unfortunately passed away and had all of his runners were sold in a dispersal. This one sold for $875,000, quite a sum to pay, but that's what connections are looking for at this time of year, three-year-olds that can race on the Kentucky Derby Trail, and uh, the owners who dipped in for this horse are starting this horse right back in a derby prep, and Tom Amos isn't being shy about moving this horse up in class. Let's look at his maiden victory from Aqueduct, where he won going a mile around one turn. Pretty impressive performance here because he didn't break that well, was towards the back of the pack early, and just steadily moved up around the far turn and finishes really gamely here as he runs past a couple of runners, including next out winner, the Reds, and he's getting away from this field at the end, like an added distance, an extra furlong shouldn't really be a problem for him. He's a son of Union Rags. The dam side, there's plenty of pedigree. His second dam is actually a half-sister to Kentucky Oaks winner, Secret Status, and multiple dirt route winner, uh, Graded Stakes dirt route winner, Alumni Hall, so a real classy pedigree on the dam side, and I think this horse can continue to improve. Tom Amos, for what, it worth, for what it's worth, he has pretty good numbers off trainer switch in dirt routes over the past five years, winning about 23% with an ROI above $2. The, just this horse has to get a little bit faster because that 94 time formula speed figure, it's not going to cut it in this race, but he does have plenty of potential to improve. So he's one that I would use underneath, but I'm not going to make him my top pick in here. That status will go to a different long shot, the number seven Obesos. Now, this is not the kind of horse that I would usually pick in a race like this because he has a lot of questions to answer, but he is going to be a price. And he's coming off two victories that I thought were very visually impressive. Really, he's run well in all of his starts, even going back to his maiden, his uh, first start in the maiden race at Churchill Downs where he was sixth. He blew the start that day, was way back, made a huge late run through the stretch to get up to split the field in a race that mostly held together on the front end. And then his last two starts, he's just been much the best. I know 
know they both came around around sprint distances, but he dropped well back in the early going of those races, made a big late move to the stretch at the fairgrounds, relishing every bit of that long quarter mile of a stretch they have down there in New Orleans to get up to win those races. The mile and an eighth stretching out from six furlongs, that's a huge question mark. But he's a son of Kentucky Derby winner Orb. His dam could handle route distances. He's a half brother to 6%, a dirt router who's competed in high level optional claiming races in New York. That one's by Central Banker. Orb is supposed to be more of a stamina influence than that sire. So there's reason to believe that Obesos could handle this distance. And I like that he's slowly broken a little bit better from the gate in each subsequent start. Last time out, he was again off a step slowly, but not the kind of disastrous start that we saw from him in his first two races. And he was much more in the bridle that day, traveling well until they got into the stretch. It was really just Brian Hernandez trying to look for a path to see how much he would win by. He finally got through, and this horse burst away from the field impressively. I think this horse has real potential to continue stepping forward. Obviously, many hurdles, but he's 12 to 1 on the morning line. I think he could even go up off that because there are other horses in this race that have to take plenty of money. So he's going to be my long shot selection in this race and star. So my top pick is the number seven, Obesos. I would use him over the number five, Senor Buscador, who I have some questions about, but I think based on the last race, he's arguably the horse to beat. And from the Lecomte, I would use those two bigger prices, the number two proxy and the number 10 Santa Cruz. But my top pick is Obesos in the Risen Star on Saturday at the fairgrounds.